three hours later, and should have a nice thick gravy going on here. What's up, soldiers? Your boy Chris here, Caribbean Pod.com vibes, and up in the kitchen as usual. If you're following me on Twitter, you'd know I've been raving about getting oxtails on sale. Oxtail is usually Mr. Oxtail as far as price goes. And it works out well because I'm trying to do more <clears throat> um, comfort food. Fall is coming in, so I thought I'd do a bonus recipe for you. This is a recipe I did many, many moons ago. Very, um, The quality wasn't all that great. I had a couple of requests. Chris, can you redo these? I think there's a gentleman from the U.S. and one... Another gentleman from down in South Africa, we're raving about this. We're doing stewed oxtail, not oxtail stew, stewed oxtail. Vibes it up. You're gonna like this one, man. I'll just quickly show you the sort of prerequisite for getting this recipe together. And one of the things we need to do, and first of all, what I would recommend doing is have your butcher cut it up into um, one inch pieces because that bone is gonna be hard. I don't think you have a machine at home to cut it up. Now, uh, because you're cutting it and because we like washing our meats in the Caribbean, now when you cut it with the band, so it will leave back a lot of grit and stuff like that. So what I'm going in here with, I have one lime um, and cool water. We're just going to squeeze that lime in there, give it a good rinse, um, scrape off any extra fat and stuff like that, and give it a good wash. Rinse it with more cool water and then um, drain it. We're going to season it up after. So we've got the cut and cleaned oxtail now. We're gonna season it and marinate it for a couple hours at least. So we're going in with salt. We're gonna hit him. Gonna hinds it up with a little ketchup. Good, I just give them a little prop stay boy. Hmm. Homemade Caribbean green seasoning and I have a recipe on CaribbeanPot.com for this. We're going in with about a tablespoon of that. And if you're not familiar with green seasoning, it is just a combination of all the herbs that we like using in the Caribbean and we make it into a sort of a an everyday paste. Some black pepper, a little Worcestershire, a nice island something we're gonna go in with some ground or spice. And all the ingredients I use here today will be listed down in the description of the video. You can also find a recipe on CaribbeanPod.com. I have here half of a large tomato diced, half of a medium onion diced, I've got some parsley, an entire scotch bonnet cut up. You can float this whole when we start cooking it, but I like it. I want that kick, man. I want that Caribbean sunshine. So that's going in there as it is. Now, if you're brave and you're handling this pepper like that, please wear gloves or wash your hands. Well, either or, you still have to wash your hands with soap and water after. And I've got here two small scallions, and I'm missing one key ingredient, and that is some grated ginger. So bear with me for a sec. So in with that grated ginger, and I don't like peeling the ginger and all that jazz. That's gonna add some nice flavor. Just make sure it's nice and clean and washed. Um, the skin that is. So you want to give it a nice dose of that ginger. And all you need to do here now is to give that a good mix and allow that to marinate. Overnight would be best if you're greedy like me. Two hours will will have to work because I'm really craving this sort of niceness. When you're talking about um, comfort food, it doesn't get much more comforting than a good stew ox steel. So a couple hours, and then we're gonna get to um, putting it all together. I've got a nice heavy pot here. This is my Dutchie pot. You need a heavy pot to really get the stewing process down perfect. And this is all about timing here. So what I would recommend doing, I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit, maybe about a teaspoon of vegetable oil in there. My pot is on high, on a high flame. And what I would recommend doing is, because again, it's all about timing, have the seasoned and marinated um, oxtail close by. We're gonna go in now with some brown sugar. Just gonna crush that down there. Tiny bit more, maybe about a tablespoon and a half or so of golden brown sugar. And this is where the timing part comes in, as in stewing, as we do, especially in the Southern Caribbean. Um, we want this to go frothy, it's gonna melt, it's gonna go frothy, and it's gonna go an amber color. You don't want it to go black. If it goes black, 
shut everything down and start over. It will be bitter. You want it to go an amber color and then we're going to start adding the um, seasoned oxtail in here. You're going to see the corners, the edges start to go amber and this is where first of all you need a dry spoon because that is melted sugar in there. Make sure it's a dry spoon and you want to start moving it around because you want all of it to go amber. You can see how fast it's starting to go because my heat is on high. You may want to put the fan on over your stove on to pull out some of that smoke from your house or open up your windows if it's the summertime. I'm just going to keep moving this. Notice how it's going frothy and the color is almost there. It's all about timing as I said. So I'm going to start picking up some of that marinated um, oxtails and get ready to add it into the pot. There we go. Into the pot. Now here's the thing. It's okay if some of the marinade goes in there but please keep back all that's in the bowl that you marinated the oxtails in. We need that. Turn your heat down to medium, um, put the lid on there and let that go for about 10 minutes. You'll notice it will sprout up its own natural juices which is exactly what we were hoping for by putting the lid on there. I'm going to crank up back my heat now to high. I want to burn off all of that liquid that's in there to intensify that stew flavor into the oxtail. So up goes that, that heat and burning off all of that liquid. And speaking about liquid, what I have here in the same bowl that I marinated the oxtail in, I've got two cups of water in there. You just want to move it around to pick up all that goodness on the bottom there. That's going to go in here as soon as all that liquid burns off. You start to hear that sizzle which means all that liquid is gone. You're left with the oil that you started off with at the start. And you notice the nice deep color got going on here. This step was just to infuse that and to bring on that nice color that we're looking for. It's about breezing now and this is where patience is going to come in. Now if you want you can put this in at this point into your um, pressure cooker and let it do its thing. I'm going to go in with one can of coconut milk. Give that a quick stir. And I'm going to go in with all that liquid and the remaining marinade that was in the pot there, in the bowl. All of that's going in there. Give that a stir. You want to bring this back up to a boil, so put the lid on there. Bring it back up to a boil. And then we're going to reduce it to a very, very gentle simmer. And let that go between two and a half to three hours. We want this meat falling off the bone. We've got that serious bubble going on here. So we're going to turn the heat down all the way to low. Lid back on. And like I said, let that slowly braise in there. If you need to add some more water near the end, you can certainly add that. It's been bubbling now for a couple of hours. So two hours, you know, this most of that liquid is starting to go down now. My gravy is going to start to thicken up. Here's the thing. If you find that you're running out of liquid here to really braise this down, you can go in with another cup of water in there. Put the lid back on and let that go for another hour in total three hours maybe more depending on how old the animal was and they slaughtered for this oxtail three hours later i should have a nice thick gravy going on here chris here caribbean pot always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me taste it for salt at this point as well let's look at that gravy now gosh some rice and peas, some boiled provisions, just plain old rice, anything. Taste it for salt, adjust it accordingly, and here is where I like going in with some chopped green onions or scallions at the end here. Always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me. Remember to check out CaribbeanPot.com. The only difference with the recipe on CaribbeanPot.com versus this one, I added coconut milk just to 
you know, spice things up a little bit. But what did I say spice? 